Hi, we are here to give you a little piece of demonstration on how we will be conducting our crash course batches which are scheduled to start, start shortly here in Vidya Lankar. These are the batches in which we will be covering exam point of view topics, important concepts, important questions which usually and frequently are asked in exam. So let me just give you an overview and just a small demonstration. Let me start with Applied Mathematics 3. Fourier series topic. Now Fourier series as you all are aware is basically divided into two parts. One is what we call as trigonometric Fourier series and that then the other one we have is complex form of Fourier series. In trigonometric Fourier series again we have several types full range Fourier series and then half range Fourier series. Now, in crash courses, we will be covering main topics and topics which are frequently asked in exam. The other questions or the other topics which are less frequently asked in exam will also be covered, but in concept way. So let me consider this question. Find Fourier series expansion of f of x is equal to x square. Function is x square and the interval is specified. Now in lecture we will discuss what are the types in detail, what are the types of intervals that we have. Here in this question we have interval 0 to 2 pi. The other types this question can be asked is in different intervals, minus pi to pi. They can ask you the same question in an interval minus L to L in interval 0 to 2 L. So basically there's these four types of intervals can be asked for this particular question, f of x is equal to x squared. Now, if interval I consider as 0 to 2 pi, I will first write what Fourier series is all about. Since we know Fourier series is given by f of x is equal to a0 by 2 plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity an cos nx plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity bn sin nx. Fourier series is what? It's nothing but a representation of function in terms of cos and sine, which are periodic functions. Now imagine you are converting a function into periodic functions. Cos and sine. Now the terms which we see here, a0, an and bn, are called as Fourier coefficients. So you'll be getting this question in exam for 6 marks. So if you evaluate A0, AN and BN, 2 marks each, you will get 6 marks. Now A0, AN, BN are given by these formulae. First of all, let us calculate A0. So my task is to find these constant and substitute it back in this Fourier series formula. A0 is nothing but 1 upon pi 0 to 2 pi f of x dx. Since the interval is specified as 0 to 2 pi, the limit of integration will be 0 to 2 pi. Had it been minus pi to pi, I would have written it as minus pi to pi. 0 to 2l, I would have written it as 0 to 2l. If it is 0 to 2l, outside I'll have 1 by l and so on. Also, inside this summation, cos nx will transform into cos n pi x by l if the interval specified is not in terms of pi if it is in terms of l then it will be a n cos n pi x by l this will be b n sin n pi x by l and so on so let us calculate this a 0 is nothing but 1 upon pi integration 0 to 2 pi f of x function is nothing but x square dx so integration will be 1 upon pi. Integration of x square is x cube by 3 with the limit 0 to 2 pi. Now let me solve it here. A0 is going to be 1 upon pi. Substitute the upper limit. 2 pi over here. It will be 2 pi cube. 2 cube is 8 and then pi cube. Divided by I have 3. Minus lower limit, if you put 0 here, you will get 0. No need to do that. 
Now pi will get cancelled with this and I am getting a0 as 8 pi square by 3. But here in this situation a0 is not my Fourier coefficient. It's actually a0 by 2. So let me divide it by 2. a0 by 2 will be, this if you divide by 2 will be nothing but 4 pi square by 3. Out of 6 we have got 2 marks for a0. Now let's go for an. Now if we solve an, we have this formula. An is nothing but, again, 1 upon pi, had it been 1 upon, sorry, had it been 0 to 2L interval, I would have written it as 1 by L. So it will be 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, f of x, now it will be f of x into cos nx dx. See, in formula I can see An is associated with cos. So in formula of An, I'll have f of x into cos nx. Similarly, when I solve bn, I will have my formula as 1 upon pi, 0 to 2 pi, f of x into sin nx dx. So let me substitute now. I have an unknown over here, f of x. That's nothing but x squared. Let me substitute 0 to 2 pi, x squared into cos nx dx. Now if you look at this integration, we have two different types of functions. This is algebraic, this is trigonometric and they are multiplied. Do I have any rule of integration? Yes, I do have. And that's nothing but u into v rule, integration by parts. Now the basic and generalized formula of integration by parts is u as it is, integration of v. Derivative of u, integration of v. Derivative of u, integration of v and so on. So what we do is we keep on integrating v and we keep on differentiating u with alternate plus minus signs. Now u and v are decided by this layer as you all are aware of logarithmic, inverse trigonometric, algebraic, trigonometric and exponential. This is the order of selection of u and v. Now x square is an algebraic function. This. Cos is a trigonometric function. Now what comes first? A. The algebraic one. This comes first. I'll say this is u. This is v. Now let me apply generalized formula. An will be nothing but 1 upon pi. Now according to this formula you have to keep u as it is. So I'll keep x square as it is. Integration of cos. Now integration of cos is sine. Sine nx divided by n. As we know sine ka derivative is cos. Derivative of integration of cos will be then obviously sine minus then I have to keep on differentiating this integrating this differentiating this integrating this so derivative of x squared 2x integration of sine minus cos nx again I have to divide by coefficient of n as we know while integrating something we always divide by coefficient of x as we did it here here again I have to divide by n there is one n already available, so it will be nothing but n square now. Plus, now again differentiate this. Derivative of 2x is 2. Minus, derivative of, sorry, integration of sine cos is sine nx. Divided by n again, it will be n cube. My next term is derivative of this, which is obviously going to be 0. 2 is constant, its derivative is 0. Now let me substitute the limit 0 to 2 pi. So an is going to be 1 upon pi. Now there are two limits, upper limit and lower limit. First I'll substitute 2 pi in place of x, then I put 0 in place of x. Let me make a bracket. Substitute upper limit 2 pi. This will be nothing but 2 pi square, which is 4 pi square, sine n into 2 pi sine n into 2 pi which is nothing but sine 2 n pi is nothing but 0. Now there are few important points which you should be aware of. Sine 2 n pi is 0 even if you have sine n pi it is 0. So basically I can say sine pi, sine 2 pi, sine 3 pi, sine 4 pi, sine 5 pi, sine 6 pi all are 0. 
sine of any integer into pi is always 0. Now that's the best part over here. If I keep, if I put 2 pi over here, sine 2 and pi is 0, this term is gone. So in my answer, I don't have this term. So this is gone. What if I have cos 2 and pi? If sine 2 and pi is 0, cos 2 and pi is 1. Now if you substitute 2 pi over here, what you will get cos 2 and pi. Cos 2 and pi is 1. 1 upon n square. Minus minus will become plus. 2 into x. But x is 2 pi. Which will give you 4 pi over here. Minus minus is plus. Cos 2 and pi will become 1. And I will get this upon n square. Substitute 2 pi in this. Sine 2 and pi. 0 again. Sine 2 and pi is 0. Upper limit done. Minus now let's go for the lower limit. Lower limit is 0. Substitute it here. 0 into this, 0. This is 0. 0 into this, 0. Sine, 0, 0. Everything is 0. The lower limit didn't give us anything. 1 upon pi and this pi will now get cancelled. And what are we left with? An is equal to 4 upon n squared. Any question of Fourier series, if you see, you will surely have involvement of this formula. So this is the most important formula while solving any Fourier series problem. No matter what question you get in exam, you have to use this. This is generalized rule of integration by parts. Now using this, we got a n value. Similarly, we will obviously solve b n. Now what is formula for b n? It is going to be 1 upon pi 0 to 2 pi f of x into sin nx dx. Now, so while integrating, here you will have sine, And obviously things will change. Sine, you will integrate, you will get minus cos. Then you have a sine and so on. You will substitute limit, get the answer. So this is how we get in exam questions based on Fourier series. As I said, what are the things they can do? They can manipulate with, the, with function. Instead of x squared, they'll give you x cubed, they'll give you sin x, they'll give you mod x, mod sin x, and so on, which will which is something we will be obviously solving in crash course batches and LMS batches. 0 to 2 pi. Instead of this 0 to 2 pi interval, they'll give you 0 to 2 l minus l to l minus pi to pi. Then there is a concept of even and odd functions. Then this is what we call as full range Fourier series as we have sine as well as cosine included in this. They may also give you a type of question which are based on half range series. Now if I say half range, what does it mean? If I call this as Fourier full range series, half range has to be either only cosine series or sine series. So this is what we have in Fourier series. Basically trigonometric form of Fourier series and hence obviously complex form of Fourier series. We have different type of formulae and all. So this was just a little uh, uh, what we say demonstration on how we will be conducting, how we will be solving problems. But in crash courses and LMS batches, obviously all these important topics thoroughly